Chum Diep Su. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here at Uncle Wai Lai's uh, and Aquarium. I'm standing here with Mark Denti. Chum Diep Su, Mark. Chum Diep Su. Uh, Mark is an animal curator of the aquarium. And uh, thank you, Mark, for granting us uh, the opportunity to speak to you about the operation as sure. well as how the Uncle Wai Lai's and Aquarium, uh, uh, the roles of this center yeah. in promoting tourism in Siem Reap in particular yeah, and sure. Cambodia because it's the first one, of course, the yeah. world class one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, we are going to discuss uh, the roles of this center, and let me start off our interview with a very simple question because yeah. I know that this uh, center started. Uh, in 2022, when uh, the world is still trying to get back from, I mean, to recover from, from COVID-19 COVID pandemic. It's yeah. a very challenging start. And uh, I just yeah. want to know, how did it look like back then in 2022 when it first launched? Okay, so we opened in November 2022. So the, actually in the end of 2022. Um, at this point, it looked very similar to what you see today. Yep. Uh, but the project before that was under construction through the main COVID period. Mm. So yep. um, for a few years uh, before that, um, I mean, it was a, a construction site when everybody here was wearing high-vis jackets, mm -hmm. hard, hard hats. Yeah, yeah, um, sure. And this we, we, um, we continued to do through COVID, but at a slower pace yep. um, until we could see the restrictions being lifted and the hope that tourism was coming back to Siem Reap. Hmm. Um, so then we decided that around November for the Water Festival was yep. a good time to open in 2022. Ah, okay, so even though we are having a very, very challenging time back then, but yeah. you still can see many tourists coming, both uh, foreign and domestic tourists. Yeah, so uh, tourism didn't really come back as quick as it was predicted in Siem Reap. Mm. Um, and, and I think we're still seeing a little bit of that now, mm. but num numbers are getting better each mm. year. Yep. Um, so from foreign tourism anyway, it was a, it was a slow start, a but, slow we had start. A, but we had a very good start from, from local um, tourism. Mm. So our, our um, our guide entries from yep. local Kamau are actually yep, very good. Yep, yep. Yep. So, because this is quite new to the local, yep. but it might not be new for Westerner, for foreign tourists. Yep. Uh, but why tourists should visit this aquarium or wildlife center to use as a curator? Okay, so we, we, we focus predominantly on Cambodian species. So, you know, if you go to a lot of projects around the world, they, they will show you animals from all around the world. Mm. Um, I think we differ in our um, our focus is on local species endemic yep. to this area, and in particular the endangered ones of those, ah. the problems they're facing, and how we can help them. Yep. So we're we're very much focused on um, uh, on the species here, local to this, um, and educating people about their issues. Mm. So I think that differs us from a lot. That's right. So I mean, you can see just behind this us one? we have a. Um, one of our largest tanks is a half a million litre. Oh. It's dedicated only to Mekong species. Oh. So all of the species in here, you can see in the Mekong River, the Tan Le Sap Lake, the Tan Le Sap River, hmm. um, and around freshwater in Cambodia. I see. So this, this is a very, very exceptional one for Cambodia in particular. Yeah. Can we say that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you go to, we can go to an aquarium outside of Cambodia mm. and uh, you won't see a Mekong um, specific tank. Mm. Um, and I think this really highlights some of the really important species that Cambodia holds. And oh. I think that's really good for this area. That's right, that's yeah. right. You might have received many feedback from visitors so far, yep. foreigner alike, yep. totally, uh, locals uh, and, and foreigners. Yep. But is this the one that they often say that it's more attractive or is there any part? I, I think uh, from the feedback we get about this one is, um, especially for local people, they, they know these species. They know even the critically endangered ones, mm. but they never see them, right? Ah, so because they're so difficult to see now. So to come here at AWA and to be able to see species close up like this, mm. then it's easier for us to educate people and to inspire people to care about them mm. because the people can actually see um, in the flesh those species. Ah, I see. So I, I think that's a very good feedback. Also here, um, we have the marine tank. Marine so we show tank. marine life 
from around the, the coast in Cambodia. Oh. So shark species. And typically the marine species are very colorful. Oh. So we get a lot of good feedback about, you know, being able to see like what a coral reef system will look oh. like and those sort of species. But people don't normally <laughs> yes, get to see that. Right. Just a very small question, because yeah. I know that there's many type of fishes here yeah. from Tunle Sab or Mekong River. But yeah. how do we get it here? Like, how do we get they, them here? Yeah, how do we get them here? Okay, so all of the fish in this tank, or most of the fish in this tank, didn't come from the Mekong or from Tonle Sap. Ah. So all of the critically endangered ones, you can see that the we have the fish. panel for. Yep. Um, actually, many of the big ones were donated to us um, mm. through uh, contacts in Phnom Penh. Mm. People have kept fish for many years. They, they're interested in these rare species. That's right. When they heard about the aquarium, um, they were keen to um, have some of the fish displayed here so mm. that people can enjoy them also mm. and learn about them. So. We transported the fish mm. from captive facilities in yep. Phnom Penh to Siem Reap. Are they retaining their ownership of the fish, no? No, no, they, they just donated they it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So one, one, one of the guys actually was from, um, he was an expat from France. He mm. lived here for many years. Yeah. Um, he loves fish and he collected for many years, but then he needed to go back. Um, and he wanted to give his fish mm. a good home and also where people can see them and enjoy them. So he, he donated to us yeah. before leaving. Yeah. That's, that's right. So I think I, I have seen, uh, it's not just a place where we can see the animal, the, yeah. the, the, uh, the aquatic uh, fishes and so on. But the most important part is education and converse, uh, uh, conservational yeah. education that yeah. we have seen so far. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit in detail how can for example, like you see small kid here coming to visit and then they just might be wondering what is it and then they want to learn more. But how can this contribute to con conservational effort or maybe education in terms okay, of... Okay, so ed education underpins everything, right? Mm. If we don't educate um, people, that, in particular the next generation yep. of Khmer, so young Khmer kids, right. then yeah. if they don't grow up to care about the environment and yep. the animals within it, they're, then they're very, very difficult to yep. conserve anything. That's so right. you can see we have a lot of education on the walls here for mm. visitors to read. They know. Um, they know. And we talk about Tonle Sap Lake and the Mekong River and the, the problems, also mm. the problems with deforestation, mm. snares in the forest, yep. not just about the water systems. Yep. Um, so then people can come here and learn about those issues. Um, but most importantly, at the minute, we have an education program mm. where we're reaching out to yep. schools in the local areas that wouldn't normally be able to afford the transport to come to visit us. We have a project with them, bringing these school groups in. And up to date, since February, we've had in excess of 30,000 school children that wouldn't have been able to come to us before. Ah. Um, and these, um, we have education program for these where they learn about the yep. fish and the other animals. So yeah. these are one of our most important things, educating the next generation of Khmer That's and right. conserving the endangered animals mm. in Cambodia. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. But it's not limited to to the kid, but all adults no, I, I, and everyone. Everyone that comes here can learn about mm. our animals. That's mm. our that's mm. our role. Mm. Um, but we focus pr uh, specifically on uh, young Khmer children because ah. uh, they're the future for Cambodia. That's so right. We, that's right. We have yeah. To. Yeah. Yes. They should learn something from this. Exactly. Mm. a lot of different species in here they not all eat the same food and also we need or we want to make sure that everybody's getting the yeah. right amount not that somebody gets big and fat and someone yeah. get very yeah. skinny yeah. so our divers scuba dive down and this way they can manage the feeding a lot a lot mm. more accurately mm. Mm. but also just to give an example this this is the giant Mekong catfish yeah so this species is actually a vegetarian 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 wow. doesn't eat fish or, mm. or meat right so we want to make sure that this one isn't eating the meat because oh. potentially it would, but it's not natural and, it, oh, and it's not good for it because yep. it's not what it evolved That's to right. eat. Wow. So this one actually eats um, vegetable mixed with water, blended with water, mm. and they actually feed from a bottle like this. The divers will feed them from a bottle. Mm. Yep. Like this, we know that they're getting the correct food. Yep. So it keeps them healthy. Yeah. I'm not really sure how often do you feed them? Just one a week or? No, every day. Every day? Yes. Oh. So these guys get fed um, uh, twice a day. You get fed twice in the morning and then in the evening. So these guys actually been recently fed. Hmm. You can see the water a little bit cloudier than before. Yep. That's because the diver was in this, this afternoon. Um, 
And then the marine tank also gets fed twice a day, morning and mm, evening mm, as well. I see. Uh, my next question, I think you have been running this center, which is yep. one of the world-class uh, aquariums and wildlife uh, uh, facility. Yep. So there might be a lot of challenges for you. Can you actually share with us what are the, the most important challenges you face and you've been trying to deal with so far as an animal curator here? Yeah, so um, one of the greatest challenges we faced when we first set the project up yep. is we want to employ a lot of people from this local area. So mm -hmm. that's one of our roles here. That's right. Uh, not just in Siem Reap Town, but in Srotnikum District. Mm. So we employ a lot of people from the local area. Um, but being the first aquarium into Cambodia, <laughs> we can't employ experienced divers like you see now mm -hmm. uh, in here. Yeah. Um, we put the teams together more than two years ago. Now they're doing a great job and That's they've right. learned all about their role, how to look mm. after the animals um, right. and a very good standard of animal welfare. But that took a long time to do because we can't employ people with that experience. Oh. So we, mm. one of our biggest challenges was to train our staff from, yep. from day one right up to the standard that we need, That's which, right. uh, yeah. which can take a very long time. Mm. And for, for my staff in particular, was also safety was a the huge safety. thing to to yeah. uh, working with tiger and bear and venomous snake oh. can be very dangerous. That's right. So understanding those safety protocols and, and how to do that, yeah. that was the biggest challenges we faced when we started. Mm -hmm. But as you can see now, we, we, we have no issue anymore. Yeah. Our team, so we have seven aquarists and we have seven animal keeper. Mm. They're dedicated every day just to look after the animals. Um, and pretty much all of those staff have been with us for the two years. That's right, yeah. I think uh, people coming here might not know that uh, I think I have learned from you that yeah. uh, not just uh, how this facility have with all of this conservational and uh, yeah. education stuff, yeah. but also that a sustainability part. You also yeah. employ uh, water treatment, the standard one, and then you have solar system yeah. here that could so in, provide the energy and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so now really every business should be sustainability focused. Mm for the good of the planet. That's it affects right. everybody and, it, and everything that lives in it. Yep. So because we're an environmental um, project, then uh, we also need to act responsibly, ethically, mm. and that mm. means being sustainable yep. where we can. Yep. Yep. So you're correct, we, we have more than a thousand solar panels on the roof um, and a few more hundred on the, on the ground, which cover our electricity needs, uh, or mostly cover our mm. electricity needs. Yep. Um, instead of taking from mains power. Yep. We have a water treatment center, so we can actually recycle a lot of the water we use. As an aquarium, we tend to use quite a lot of water. Yeah. A lot of that can be reused. And now we have the water treatment plant. Um, it's just another form of recycling. And we try not to sell any plastic products, um, anything that goes into the environment wow. and causes damage. So yeah, we sure. use recyclable coffee cups, for example, yeah, or yeah. straws, recyclable yeah, straws. Yeah. Once, another question that I believe uh, some tourists might have yeah. heard and then because of that a lot of debates on the increasing uh, knowledge and awareness on yep. for example like uh, ecotourism which mm -hmm. they contemplate more the, the balance between environments and the effects on yep. the animal itself for example like putting animal in captivity yep. might raise some concern for them they just want to know how we can actually ensure the ethical issue properly. But yeah. to you as an animal curator, you might have something to say to us, for example, like this wildlife and aquarium center. Yeah, um, so, I mean, ethically is, 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 what, is, is what is needed, uh, okay? And I think it's a very good thing now that people, uh, a lot of people are starting to question hmm. whether a project is ethical or not before right. they visit. That's this right. is great news That's from right. us, yeah. this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. You know, it's, it's like every business or every, every industry, yeah. you have ethically good and ethically bad. That's right. right? Yep. So it's about doing research mm. yourself yep. to see if it's a project that, that you feel comfortable visiting and supporting mm. or not. That's right. So I can give you a few examples. So our project here, um, we have a few different conservation projects. Um, I just finished releasing some more Siamese crocodiles into their former range where we have people looking after them in the wild. Mm. Um, we do captive breeding of endangered species, yep. some of which we can release back in the world. Mm. We have the education programs and we have some research That's projects. Right. Yep. So this is all doing good things for the wildlife in Cambodia and giving back to mm. it, right? And yep. promoting their conservation. Yeah, yeah. So this is a forward, you know, a modern facility which is gonna give back. Mm. If you find an animal collection 
that is not doing any of those things and is purely there just to show you the animals, <laughs> then it's good to question that. Yeah. Maybe you shouldn't support those. Yeah. yeah. You raised so many interesting points and I think the challenge part is also vital for us to understand and sustainability part also, yeah. I think, let us know why we should appreciate this one, uh, the, the facility. But uh, look into your future plan, for example, like uh, mm -hmm. we, we have been running this for around two years. Two and years, so, yeah. uh, I think there might be a lot of things to do more. But what are, what are your plans to ensure to at least to enhance the attractiveness of this facility? Make sure that uh, yeah. foreign as well as local tourists will yeah. come and visit the, the animal here. Yeah, so uh, like everything in the, in the tourism and leisure, leisure industry, we should always be looking to move forward. If mm. you don't move forward, you kind of move backwards, That's right? right? That's right. So, which means uh, natural expansion mm. um, and to uh, give new products as well that people can come enjoy. Mm. So, I mean, looking forward to the future, this is currently phase one. We have other phases mm. planned, mm. and that will mean more endangered species for more breeding, mm. more species to people to come and see and learn about, and also more products. Yeah. Um, for example, right now we do a River Monster Lecture river proje monster. Um, uh, project, which is a tour. You can come in and you can see the back of house. You can learn about how we look after the rare fish and the problems that they face and how we're hoping um, to put a stop to that. Yep. And in the future, we're going to launch like a VIP this tour, one. which include the wildlife as well. So mm. we see the aquarium and also meet some of the keepers and see what it's like to look oh, after the animals cool. and some yeah. of the things they need, such as medical treatments, enrichment, and what makes it, um, you know, a, 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 a very good standard of animal welfare. Mm. And that gives people an insight and, you know, it's a little bit more personal, mm. a little bit more interactive. That's right. Yeah. So on my right hand side, you can see the yep. tiger here. Yep. So how many wildlife species here that you actually have right now in um, addition to the aquatic the, species over there okay so we have so we have around 17 species of what we call terrestrial, terrestrial or land-based animals land -based. so not inside the aquarium oh. um, but then we also have a reptile house which has a lot of local species in so um, I think I've got close to 20, uh, sorry, 30 more species inside the reptile mm -hmm. house. Um, so that gives you an idea about what we, what we currently yep, have. Yep. Yeah. So are there any like, ways that a uh, uh, visitor can have a close encounter just like this one? Is there any possible ways? Um, well, uh, typically our, our normal visitor yep. um, are, are not allowed any access to the mm. animals. We don't want people getting close to the animals. We don't want people disturbing that's our right, animals, that's right? right. Yep. That's very important. Um, so yeah, everybody can come here um, from the view window one. and see yeah. the, tiger the tiger or the bears mm. or the, the, any of the other animals. Um, but like I said, during, when we do our uh, products like River Monster Lecture, which is more VIP, it's a VIP. guided tour, mm. um, or the VIP tour we're going to do in the future, what that means is it's a little bit more personal. Smaller groups mm. with, um, right. with animal keepers, and with, then it means we can show you the back of house or we can create animal enrichment and you can give to them just what our keepers do. That's right. so, we, so we can do that, but that's mm. part of the VIP, the VIP. tour yeah, um, yeah. products. Just for information, because we have seen land-based animal and you mentioned reptiles, so yep. uh, where do you get this animal from? Are they just well, my, rickshaw animal? And yeah, so most of our animals here outside um, yeah. actually came from Plum Tamal, Plum Tamal. Um, huh? wildlife, Wild or, or zoo, sorry, yeah, sure. yeah. Plum Pen. Uh, so most of the animals were rescued from Wildlife Alliance from mm. the illegal pet trade. These animals have grown up around people, yep. meaning that they're not eligible for release. You know, they won't either know how to survive so in the wild, yep. or they're not scared of people, which mm. is no good if you're a wild That's animal. Right. Right. So we give them a we give them a home mm. um, as a last resort because mm. we can't release them. That's right. Yeah. I think it come to my final question because we have learned a lot about the facility yeah. the aquatic parts and then the land based animals and reptiles because we have, even though we've been, we haven't been here but i uh, just want to know from you because i think uh, our audience out there might want to know why if they are living in Siem Reap or maybe inside cambodia why they should come to visit this aquatic sorry aquariums and then wildlife center in Angkor. Okay, so I, I think our, our main focus for people to come and visit us is one, we want you to have a good time, we want you to have a good day out, that's right? right. That, that's important. Yep. Whether you go to the temples or come to the park here, uh, we want you to have a good time. 
Um, and you can do that by seeing species that you won't normally see. Right? Mm. So it's very interesting. Um, but then also you can learn something on that day out mm. also. And that's I think right. that's, so we want to inspire people to care about the environment, care about the species in it. Um, but of course you need to have a good time when you're doing that's that. Right. And, that's, and right. that's why, yeah. you know, seeing the animals in the flesh or watching the animals do some enrichment. Mm. For instance, we have, you see the large tiger pole we have here. Yep. We can send some small bits of food down this by the zip line mm. and you can watch our tigers climb the pole to get the wow. food. Wow. This is not just for you guys to enjoy. <laughs> this yep. is also a good workout for the animals, what makes animals. them use the muscles, um, keeps them from getting bored, mm. that sort of thing. So yeah, sure. we can actually mix the two. We can, you know, by giving our animals a good active um, and physical home, yeah. means people can see them do something maybe they wouldn't see elsewhere mm. when they just maybe are asleep or they, they don't move. Thank you, thank you, Max, for okay. your no for your insightful uh, interviews. And then we have learned a lot from the Uncle Wildlife and Aquarium Center here. And hopefully <laughs> we'll visit you again in the future. Thank yeah, you. thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.